What is up guys, Buchanan here from Latium Technologies, NISQ's best kept secret. Today I'm gonna to be taking you through our latest development in our Yonder IIoT platform. And that is why we've come here into the urban sprawl that serves as Edmonton's downtown core to try and see whether our parent hub can pull messages, not necessarily from a distance, but through floors of concrete as we go into the library parkade. I'd be meeting with our team of engineers to see how far our Yonder parent hub could pull messages from a specialty sensor designed to detect foundational flooding. Oh, okay guys, so are we all set up in the car with the parent device set up? Yep. Mark, sensors are ready. Sensors are ready. Okay, perfect. Omar, we're going to be good to go? Yep, ready to go. Okay, sounds right. good. Okay, so while we get underway, Mark, uh, why don't you just tell us a little bit about what we're going to be doing today and how we're testing this and why it's important. Well, we thought that we'd be different. All of these sensor companies uh, out there trying to get your business will always cherry pick the best conditions, the longest range. And it's sort of like buying a new car and your mileage is never quite what they post on the right. Yeah, yeah. We thought we'd be different and we would pick a ridiculously difficult situation. So difficult being an underground parquet. I but would say so. What could be more difficult? So let's just try and see how our performance is. We'll walk around up okay. on the street too. While Mark and I headed for our first destination, Omar and Luca took to setting up the parent device base station to receive sensory messages. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's quickly explain what Yonder does. In a Yonder installation, sensors are deployed across the job site. Our parent hub, the device that Omar is setting up in his car, is designed to pull sensory data and send it to our back-end interface. Unlike current in-market solutions, Yonder actually analyzes data at source, cutting down the amount of information that needs to be transmitted and infrastructure you need in place. Now it was up to our team to see just how far that data could be transmitted in non-optimal conditions. Okay, so let's get in touch with the guys upstairs and see whether just one floor down we're able to move through all this concrete. Sent a message to Omar. So Omar go. Okay. Successful connection. Let's go to the other side of this level two and we'll see what we can do. See what we okay. can do. Let's go. So here we are. We're actually close to where the LRT entrance is. Now, for proximity's sake, as far as where they are, we're not only a floor down in the you know, concrete car covered building. How many meters away do you think we are? Uh, almost a full city block east. Yeah, we're almost a full city block and down a layer underground yep. and are we receiving messages? Yep, yep, no problem. He said that it hasn't dropped out once yet. So. Okay, perfect. All right, let's keep going. As Mark and I traveled deeper into the parkade, our team upstairs received all of our sensory messages. With this portion of the test done, Mark and I decided it might be time to stretch our legs a bit. Okay, so we've shown that we're able to receive messages through three floors of concrete. But this begs another question. How far are we able to get in any direction, let's say if we were on a street level? So Mark and I have come back out to where we started today, and we're gonna be heading in either direction to see where exactly the signal drops off. Our first destination would take us one city block north of the parkade to Edmonton's Tickets on the Square. Yes, we're still getting it, no and, problem. Yeah, we're still good. So we're gonna keep going, see where we can get to. Still all good, still getting messages. We're up to spread factor nine now, but we've got a little bit more to go. We're gonna head a little bit farther north and see where see where we can get. So in our last installment, we were at uh, the, the statue of Winston Churchill, and we said we're going to walk a little bit farther and see how far we can go. And as we said in the beginning, this is a hard test. We do hard things, so Absolutely. we only got about another 20 meters, but this is about the extent of our range to the north. So. Perfect. Okay. Well, why don't we try going a little further in the opposite direction? So it's the Hotel McDonald. Yeah. Why don't we try that? I love that idea. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. So we have come across Jasper Avenue. We are now standing in front of the Hotel McDonald, which is right behind us there. Um, and Mark is uh, waiting on uh, confirmation from uh, our team parent down in the uh, basement to see if we're still getting messages. And while he does that, I'm just gonna reiterate, not only are we a city block away, they are also beneath the ground under a floor of concrete. That's really impressive, especially for the construction clients that uh, we're aiming to please with this new technology. All right, so just got the text message from Omar. Yep. 
they got the messages here, spread factor 9 and 10, and uh, decent signal given that there's no direct line of sight. Let's try heading east down Jasper, see how far All right. we can get. Let's go. Even without a direct line of sight, we were able to get yet another block east while our base station team was in the parkade. Feeling chipper about our success, we decided to try just one more test over a quick beverage. All right, so Mark and I came into Kraft to uh, have a little uh, beverage. A small one. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and to see whether we'd be able to get a signal from our guys down in the parkade. Now, they still think we're wandering around the streets. And, yeah. Fools. Yes. Um, have they received a message yet? Yes, they have. That's awesome. Yes, that is awesome. Perfect. So, I'll cheers to that. Cheers to that. Yeah.